Most modern refrigerated trailers have enough refrigeration capacity to maintain the temperature of the chilled, frozen, or ice cream products they are designed to carry. But the refrigeration unit must be coupled with a pathway to distribute conditioned air around the load space. Proper loading is the key to providing this pathway for conditioned air. The trailer, in combination with the way the product is loaded into it, must provide a pathway for conditioned air to surround the load and stop outside heat or cold from reaching the load. Without this pathway of conditioned air, heat from the sun, road, and outside air will penetrate the walls of the trailer and warm, chilled, or frozen products. In the winter, cold outside conditions can cause chilled products to freeze. This load is too high and has blocked the air supply chute, the first step in the air pathway. A blockage here completely prevents air from traveling along the rest of the pathway. Most of the load is in danger of warming. In this load, the pathway is blocked at the side walls and floor. Summer heat will warm all of the product touching these surfaces. Blocking the air pathway along the walls and floor can cause damage to frozen or chilled products. Although this truckload of lettuce was loaded at 39 degrees, much of the product touching the walls and floor arrived at temperatures above 50 degrees. On the right, you can see the condition of some of the coolest lettuce in the load. Compare that with the lettuce on the left which was loaded against the walls. Poor loading caused it to be rejected at the market. Improper loading of frozen products can also cause warming and damage like that seen in the truckload of lettuce. The discolored beans on the left were allowed to thaw in transit and refreeze. The bright green beans on the right were held at the proper temperature during transit. In the winter, loading against trailer walls and floor can cause freezing such as we see in the apples on the left. Remember, the goal of proper loading is to maintain a clear pathway around the load to allow refrigerated air to absorb heat entering from the outside. The chute is the first step in the pathway. It delivers air to the entire top of the load. The chute must be in good condition. If you see any holes, patch them before loading. A chute in poor condition will not spread air evenly over the load and may result in hot spots. If the chute has become detached from the ceiling, reattach it. Load only up to the chute. Do not allow boxes to crush or even touch the chute. Here is a correct load placement which allows the proper flow of air. Next, the air must spread out over the top of the load. Allow adequate room for the air to move from the chute to the walls and rear door. Do not allow an extra high load to block the air as it travels to the walls and rear door. A few extra boxes on the top of the load may prevent cold air from circulating to the walls and rear of the trailer. Here is a correct load that provides adequate headspace. The air must now continue its path down along the rear door. This load completely blocks the air path between the door and the rear of the load. It is also unsafe for anyone opening the door. This load pattern provides the needed two to three inch gap between the boxes and the rear door. It is properly braced with a load gate to guarantee that the boxes do not shift back against the door. Load bars can also be used to stop the boxes from shifting. Next, the refrigerated air moves down a path between the load and the side walls. If the trailer has ribbed walls, you can load against the walls. The ribs form an air path down the walls. Unfortunately, 95% of the trailers in use today have smooth walls. Loading directly against smooth walls blocks the air path between the load and the walls. With smooth walls, the load must be placed to allow an air path along the side walls. 
Some strawberry shippers use this method to keep palletized loads braced away from the walls. Styrofoam blocks are held in place with short sticks that are placed between the boxes. Blocks are attached before loading. Another shipper uses these corrugated strips to brace frozen and chilled loads. The strip is coated on one side with an adhesive to attach it. If the trailer is wide, you can build an air path down the middle of the chilled load, as well as along the walls. Airbags should be used to stabilize a chilled load with a center pathway. Frozen products should be center loaded and braced away from the smooth walls. If there is not enough width for paths along both walls and in the load, use only the wall paths. They are far more important than the load path. Next, the air must begin its return to the refrigeration unit along the floor. Special deep channel floors have enough open area for the air to return to the refrigeration unit. Shallow duct floors do not have adequate open area for proper air flow. Do not load directly on a shallow duct floor. Chilled loads should be placed on pallets or specially built floor racks. Some shippers have successfully transported frozen products on slip sheets. Be sure the floor is clean. A little trash can completely block the path of the air along the floor. Load dividers are sometimes used in mixed loads. They should not drop all the way to the floor, otherwise they will block the floor air path. Hand stacked boxes can also cause the same problem. Never hand stack on the floor if pallets are needed to provide an air path. The final step in the air path around the load is the front bulkhead. This keeps the load from shifting against the front wall and blocking the air returning along the floor and walls. Products can be loaded directly against a solid bulkhead like this one. If the trailer does not have a solid bulkhead, make a temporary one out of pallets or special racks. Make sure the bottom board of the temporary bulkhead does not touch the floor and block the floor air path. Remember, Proper loading requires a clear path for refrigerated air to flow around the load. The path begins with an open chute in good condition. Load to allow adequate and uniform headspace. Properly brace the load away from the rear door. Brace the load away from the side walls. Make sure the floors are clean. Do not place product directly on shallow duct floors. Use pallets to make a temporary bulkhead if the trailer does not have one. Finally, frozen products should never be left on a dock that is warmer than 20 degrees. Chilled products can quickly warm if they are left out in the open. Never leave them on an open dock. Only load products that are at proper shipping temperature. Tell your supervisor about any obvious trailer problems like damage to walls, broken door seals, odors from previous loads, and missing air chutes. Trailers should be thoroughly pre-cooled before being loaded, and the trailer doors opened only just before loading begins. The refrigeration unit must be turned off when the trailer doors are open. If it is left on, ice may build up on the refrigeration coil. Follow the recommended loading practices, and you will have done your part to ensure that the product will arrive at its destination in good market condition.